Hi, my name is Sheila. Welcome to the video. We are going to be talking about the fighting cookie companies. Now, to be honest, I had never heard of either of these companies, but there seems to be quite a bit going on between the two of them. Let's go ahead and jump right into the lawsuit, see if I can pull that up so we can see what is going on between these two companies. So it's Crumble, C-R-U-M-B-L, L-L-C, they are the plaintiffs and they have filed this complaint against Crave against Crave Cookies LLC. So that's who the parties are. Well, it says the complaint is for trade dress infringement and related claims. Let's be clear on what trade dress is. So we could all be on the same page here because if we don't understand that, then we're not really going to be able to frame what the complaint is. Trade dress is the commercial look and feel of a product or service that identifies and distinguishes the source of the product or service. It includes the various elements, such as the design and shape of materials used to package a product or services. I think that's gonna be really important. For example, the Hard Rock Cafe restaurant chain uses a distinctive decor, which is considered trade dress. This look and feel is protected if it serves to protect the ability to identify the source of goods just as a trademark does. So what we're talking about here is the look and feel of the product. We might call it the brand, how other people think of it when they see it, you know, how is it all put together? Like, how am I put together? What do I typically wear? What do I typically look like? That's my brand, that might be my trade dress. I don't know that anybody would wanna sue over what I look like though. Just like I said before, this is coming out of Utah. So if I got any people from Utah who have had these cookies, let me know because you know, I'm that person who still gets them from the grocery store and makes my own. I've actually got cookie dough in the refrigerator right now. It's chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. So I love those things. Let me know, you know, if you have a preference over either one of these cookies, if you've tried them before, whether you feel like, you know, hmm, based on what you said about trade dress, I'm already feeling a little some kind of way, Sheila. All right, this is an action arising under the US Trademark Act of 1946. Let's talk about this Crumble company. It says here, since 2017, Crumble has sold and promoted its gourmet cookies and has achieved tremendous success based on its unique business model. Okay, you guys, I didn't even get that far into this, right? I'm like, unique business model, you're selling cookies. I don't know, I haven't got in yet. I'm just, you know, that's just my first impression. Valuable intellectual property, no doubt there, and substantial investment in time, resources, and incredibly hard work, work poured into the crumble business by its founders. Hey, kudos, because it's really hard to start a business, make it successful, and keep it going. Based on that hard work and effort, Crumble is in an enviable position today with its recognized brand, substantial goodwill, and hundreds of franchisee stores across the nation. Okay, let me stop there for just a second. It's that whole first to market, right? Whoever is first to get their product out, then yeah, it's easier to build market share. Now, I don't know how unique their business model is, you know, but it sounds like they've become a recognized brand for what they do. Now, around here where I am, there's a place called Insomnia Cookies. So apparently, you know, if you're wide awake at 2 a.m., you can go get some cookies from Insomnia Cookies. I've never had them. My daughter's had them. She said they are great. Other friends that I have, they have said they are great. So I totally get that you can have a unique business model around selling cookies and then distinguish yourself in such a way that these new people come along. They take a look at what you're doing. They're like, hey, I can do that too. Well, look at me. I'm here copying what other legal YouTubers, law tubers are doing. It's the same thing. In November 2019, after Crumble denied an application by Crave's founder to become a Crumble franchisee, Crave began selling and promoting its copycat gourmet cookies using packaging, decor, and presentation that is substantially and confusingly similar to Crumble's established and successful trade dress and brand identity. There's that word brand. See, I was right. I was right. All right, let's stop here because I feel like there's a lot to talk about here. So wait a second. So you're telling me that what happened was Crave said, hey, 
we want to become a Crumble franchisee. And Crumble said, no, I don't think so. And so Crave said, that's fine. We'll go do our own thing then, which is what they did. Apparently they liked them so much. You know what they say? Imitation is such a form of flattery. However, in this case, it may be illegal imitation. So let's see what's going on here. You know, when you're putting together a, um, a complaint, the words that you use mean everything. So notice, you know, some of what they're saying here. You know, they say incredibly hard work poured into the crumble business. It says substantial goodwill, not goodwill, but substantial goodwill. It says unique business model. It says copycat gourmet cookies, not just cookies, not just copycat cookies, but copycat gourmet cookies. Like our cookies are very different. So there's a lot here that's being said just in terms of this first part of the complaint. Like I'm in, I'm in, I've never even had this stuff. Crave's unauthorized use of Crumble's trade dress is an effort to ride the coattails of the valuable goodwill, reputation, and brand identity associated with Crumble. Through this action, Crumble seeks to stop Crave's infringement of Crumble's valuable intellectual property rights and seeks redress for the harm caused by Crave's copying. <laughs> Notice we, we want to frame this the whole time, right? That's what they're doing. All right, and then they're asking for other relief there. General allegations. First one talks about Crumble's business model and intellectual property rights. Remember this unique business model because I want to hear what it is. You know, it could be something truly different. Like I said, Insomnia had the whole, you're awake at night, you need cookies, we're here for you. You know, that that's a reputation that you can build a clientele around. Crumble, which operates a unique gourmet cookie business, first opened its store in 2017. It's been seeing explosive, it, remember those adjectives, explosive growth. What kind of growth? Explosive. Now has over 400 franchisee stores operating in 44 states and it's unique business is successful, popular, and expanding to distinguish itself from its competitors. Okay, I want to hear this part because I don't know who they are. Crumble sells its gourmet cookies together with a unique trade dress and brand identity. Crumble has invested substantial time and resources developing its brand identity, trade dress, and trademarks, which have accrued substantial goodwill and brand recognition. Crumble's business model is distinctive in several ways. In addition to its storefronts, Crumble offers a delivery service for its scratch-made gourmet cookies, which are sold along with ice cream and other bakery items. Um, the cookie is still warm in its unique oblong pink boxes. The trade dress of which is registered below featuring its registered Crumble Cookies Lobo. Lobo. Logo. Sorry about that. Customers enjoy a seamless ordering experience on the Crumble app or on iPads mounted to the kitchen walls. Okay, everybody does that now. Crumble offers its timely cookie flavors through a, re a weekly rotating menu. Okay. Okay, which customers keep up with through Crumble's dynamic, okay, social media accounts and on Crumble's website, crumblecookies.com. Okay, so here's some of its unique and arbitrary features. I get it says cookie boxes with no extra space that perfectly fit cookies lying side by side, whimsical outline shaped drawings, including a cookie with a bite taken out of it. Okay, so how many times have we seen a picture of a cookie with a bite taken out of it? Yes, individually, maybe not. But together, they're saying that they could put together this whole brand identity. That I can go along with. And so they're just listing here. You know, I'm not trying to poo-poo the whole cookie with a bite taken out of it, but let's put it in context. That alone is not a whole lot, okay? So they're listing all of these things. Cookies lying side by side, okay. My husband would be like, do you think I care? I just wanna open the box and eat the cookies. And they've got pictures here. Okay, the pictures look kinda of cute here. They've got some examples. I mean, I love the design on the box. The design on the box looks great. It's a cute little box. It looks like a little delivery truck kind of thing. I mean, that, that looks really cute. Um, this is whimsical, so I get why they use the, the term whimsical. So, you know, you have to put it all in context. And then they've got a picture here of their mobile delivery truck, which 
has the same design on it. So it totally fits. They've carried the brand along just as you're supposed to. So everything looks great. So they've put together their whole packaging identity. And so that's what they're saying. So it's sort of like, okay, I'm a Krispy Kreme person. So it's sort of like when you buy the, the, the different kinds of, um, donuts from Krispy Kreme that are the funky kind, like I don't really buy, I just get, I just get glazed donuts, right? But if you get chocolate covered and chocolate covered with sprinkles and all this other stuff, then yeah, they are side by side, just like they're talking about in this lawsuit. You would not put decorative cookies stacked one on top of another. Krispy Kreme could say, hey, we started that whole deal when we were doing our donuts, but no, you know, I get it though, but they're saying they did all of this. They put all of this together and that makes sense that you would want to protect, you know, everything that you've put together here. So weekly rotating menu, they've got all of this. All of this is listed here in the lawsuit. They've got um, their filing information for their trademarks and for the design. This is registered trademarks here. The foregoing common law marks, which have been continuously and exclusively used by Crumble for years, will be referred to as the common law trademarks. They use them on their website, on social media accounts, storefronts, and in promotion of their cookies. Yeah, this is Crumble enjoys success and a highly regarded reputation in its field due in large part to its use of and rights in trade dress and marks. So I like the look of it. And a lot of times look sell. Apple. I bought a pair of the Apple ear, earphone, ear, headphones, headphones. I bought a pair of the Apple headphones and they come in the same distinctive white packaging, nice design. Like it's that same look all back over again. People are really branding themselves when they put their companies out there. There is some value to that um, and you wanna protect it. So then they says, then they move into the next section, which is craves unfair competition and it's unauthorized copying, exploitation and use of Crumble's intellectual property. Okay, so after years, years, of uh, extensive sales here that Crumble's talking about, Crave began offering the exact same type of product for sale to substantially the same customers. Okay, yeah, people who like cookies. Its marketing images are similar to Crumble's in both expression and look and feel. Its cookies are dressed in a manner that imitates Crumble cookies. What did I say about life? About uh, imitation is flattery, right? The best form and its packaging is confusingly similar to Crumble's packaging. Okay, so let's talk about confusion because that is really what the court is going to be looking at. It, it, it you know, there is some value to you having your product and your brand, but it's this confusion in the marketplace. Does it cause confusion in the marketplace about its origin, about who is the company that is putting this product out there? If consumers are confused, that is going to be a problem for Crave. All right, Crumble Cookies and its packaging is confusingly similar to Crumble's packaging. We're talking about the trade dress here. The problem for Crave, however, is that at the time it began operating a cookie a cookie business substantially similar to Crumble's business, Crumble had already been operating its gourmet cookie business, including under its trademarks and the Crumble trade dress for years. Crave chose a name and logo that is substantially similar to Crumble's name and logo, including lowercase lettering, a black circle, and substantially identical cookie with a bite mark bite with a bat with a bite out of it that copies the marks in the trade dress that crumble used years before so now we've got these pictures now we can finally put them side by side and take a look at it you let me know what you think do these look the same would you get confused you'd be like hey that cookie, can we go get some cookies from that cookie store you know the one that has the cookie with the bite thing out of it because that's what you think right you'd be like it's it begins with a c and there's a cookie, you know, it, it's that cookie store. They make gourmet cookies. You might get confused. The fact that they have like one name and it's one syllable, crumble, well, okay, two syllables, crumble and crave cookies. I don't know. I'd be a little worried if I were crave. Oh, oh, 
let's get to the next page. I'm telling you, you guys, when it's first impression like this and you can open it up, I'm sorry if I sound a little over the top because I look at it and I'm looking, I'm like, no, they didn't do that. But yeah, they did. So you, you've got this black, got this black background, this pink circle around it, the white design on the inside. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, did Crave like go to their designer and say, hey, make me something like that? That's what we do a lot of times. We say, hey, I like the style of this. Can you do something similar to that for me? In this case, Crave may have gone, I'm sorry. Yeah, Crave may have gone too far. So I don't know. It says defendants intent to copy all aspects of Crumble's business even extends to how it decorates and photographs its cookies. For example, the following are side by side screenshots. Let's look at those. Oh, oh, they actually look like waffles. Okay, Crave's cookies look like, I guess that's the waffle cookie that they have. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Crave's cookie though, and it actually looks better. Um, it actually looks better because from an aesthetic sort of, I mean, you've got the cookies in the background. So you've got the depth of field there as opposed to just the white background, which, you know, is an entirely different sort of feel. Like if I, if I were arguing that, I would say those are two totally different looks. Yes, they're both stacked, but we've got depth of feel here. We've obviously got some design there on the bottom. We've got cookies in the background even the one with the marshmallows. I mean, they're, I'm sorry, their cookie, their pictures actually look better to me. I mean, that's a personal preference thing though. Crumble is sticking with their pink, they've got their colors, they're doing their thing with their brand. This, this doesn't look the same. And this one in particular, where they're breaking the cookie and then theirs is just sitting there, there's nothing similar about that except for the fact that they have the same kind of cookie. Maybe this recipe is, just well known on recipes.com. I don't know. I'd have to go there and see, but you know, they've got the, the, is that a Hershey? I don't know. That's on top there, but it looks good. Like that's a good looking cookie. I don't know. Maybe Crumble's just mad because their presentation looks a little better. I actually think from a personal perspective, not from a legal perspective, but let me know what you think. Which cookie looks more like the cookie you want to eat. Is it this one or this one or this one or this one? While these cookies are very similar, um, uh, you know, maybe they took their recipes because we need to get to that point too. But the pictures I think are, are different. Now this one at the top with the limes, but if you have the same cookie, then yeah, you might decorate with the limes. For instance, if you have a chocolate chip cookie, you might put some chocolate chips beside it. That's what you're going to do. You're going to throw the sprinkles they didn't with their sprinkle cookie, but Crave did. I can totally see how they would be upset. I really can. Okay, so then they've got add-ons. They say they they're copycatting our add-ons. It's a it's a travel mug. I hate to say it, but it's drop shipping all day long. It's a Shopify store. These things are a dime a dozen now. And you've got your pink still, and they're doing their black and white thing. I mean, I actually think Crumble's sticking more to their brand than Crave is. Okay, and so Crave sat them up. They said copycat packaging. Okay, so this is the layout of the cookies in the box. From an aesthetic and design perspective, I think Crumble has them beat there, but we haven't seen the outside. But the inside, if I were, if I were Crave, I'd say, you know, and I can't see because it looks like they've got parchment paper on the inside, but I, I'd say, no, we don't have fold over sides with graphics on the inside of the box. Yes, the outside looks very, very similar. It's the same shape. It's very aesthetically pleasing, but they're different. This is pink, this is black, this is black on pink. This is a gold color, which to me, the gold is more of, I don't wanna say classier, but it feels more like it's a high level, high end luxury kind of cookie, real gourmet, whereas crumble, feels more like, hey, we're your store. You know, we've got this pink design. There's a different, to me, there's a different feel. There's a different feel to them, to me, just looking at them. Uh, it says, as shown by the foregoing, Crave uses a substantially similar name, I agree, and logo. Yeah, the C's and just sort of one, one word. 
to provide substantially similar products and services to the same group of cookie loving consumers. Well, yeah, markets its products the same way as Crumble does and copies Crumble's product packaging and decor. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know if you think this is close. Would you be confused by that? You know, craves. So for instance, if I were, th if I were throwing an event and I was looking for an elegant cookie company to come in, I'd call Crave. If it was a party, you know, lively, upbeat, young, I might go for Crumble. Crave to me feels like it's more high end or it's going for a higher end customer, even though they both say gourmet. I just feel like there's something different about the two of them. I, I it, it would depend on what kind of party I was having. If, if I liked the cookies the same and I was throwing an event, it really would come down to what kind of event am I throwing? I don't think I'm gonna be confused. To be honest, if I'm looking at that and I'm throwing an event, I'm not gonna be confused by the two of those because to me, they're very different. However, if you're just talking about, are people gonna get confused about, hey, let's go over to the, to the cookie shop. You know, the gourmet cookie, you know, begins with a C, you know, it's like one word. Okay, yeah, people could get confused. They talk about infringing trade dress. They say um, marketing. They say this is no coincidence. It says upon information and belief at the time of Craig's founding, uh, the founder was no stranger to crumble, crumble and its business model and trademarks. This is shortly before Craig's founding, the founder toured a crumble franchise location and applied to be a franchisee. And it says when he was denied, he opened his own cookie business. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with being denied and opening your own cookie business. But he says that, well, they use our trade dress logo and marketing concepts. Yeah, similar to ours. That's what they did. And they are infringing. This is with the intent to benefit and profit from um, that. And it says here, so we get to this important part. Crave deliberately adopted the infringing trade dress, knowing and intending that the revel relevant public, inclu including consumers, would likely be confused, thereby unfairly diverting sales from Crumble to Crave. Again, you know, I'm just telling you how I feel when I look at them. If I were Crave, I'd be like, no, we're actually going for a different segment of the market. So yes, the market as a whole, when we talk about cookie loving people, gourmet cookies, we're going after that market, but we're actually actually interested in a different type of consumer. Hence the black and gold um, that we're going for and not the pink and white. Business models and branding. So yeah, so you can't get past this, this piece with the one word both beginning with C and you know, both being cookies. They say it's infringing. I think when you look at it in total, okay? I don't think you can just pull the cookies out, the picture of their cookie with a bite out in your hat with a cookie attached with a bite mark and say that that's it. You gotta look at the whole thing, which is what they're going to be doing, of course. Okay, I needed to take a moment here because now this really looks like this is a problem for Crave when you put them side by side like this and you actually see the cookies. This could be a really big problem for them. Crave's conduct is likely to confuse, mislead, and deceive Crave's customers, purchasers, and members of the public as to the origin of Crave's products. That's the test, okay? That is the litmus test. Are people likely to be confused about where this is coming from, okay? Are they winding up at the wrong store? So, you know, if, if Crumble could walk in and say, hey, here's some stuff we got on our social media and said, hey, we thought you guys were the other guys. We went to the other store first and then came over here. Like that would be evidence. That would be evidence. Crave's use of the infringing trade dress constitutes false designation of origin or sponsorship of Crave's products and tends to falsely represent that Crave's products and services originate from Crumble. This is, this is an intent allegation here, that you're intentionally trying to do this. Crave's conduct is likely to confuse, mislead, and deceive customers. And again, here, here's where they sum it up in paragraph 77. On information and belief, Crave's conduct was and is willful and intentional. And that's what they're saying. He got turned down, so he started his own cookie company with the whole intent of sort of taking us down. You know, it's all based on the same um, idea, this use of the marks that they're using and the brand and um, the whole trade dress piece. 
So the last one is unjust enrichment. It would be unjust for Crave to retain the profits, gains, and other benefits that it has derived from its illegal use of the infringing mark and logo and the infringing trade dress. Prayer for relief here. Asking for damages, post pre-judgment and post-judgment interest, costs, attorney's fees, and any and such other and further relief as the court may deem just and proper. And attorneys always throw that in. That gives the court the discretion to be able to determine, you know, some things that are fair and just once all of the evidence is in and both sides have had an opportunity to present all of their evidence. So that's it. That's the cookie bite. That's the cookie bite. I'm interested in seeing how this plays out now that I've taken a look at this complaint and looked at the logos, the designs of what they're actually saying. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing how this proceeds through the court and uh, stay tuned, come back and maybe we'll check out some more. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Mwah. Peace.